What is going on? It's Alex here. Thank you so much for watching my new video. And today I'm gonna share some tips, some information I wish I knew before I started my training to become an aircraft mechanic. A little bit of ba background of myself. While I was going to high school, I was able to get a scholarship to go to AMP school. I started going to school in 2004, 15, 2015, and I earned my AMP in 2017. I was working in the field since 2016, so I currently have about three years and a half of experience in the field. I am currently not working as an AMP, I'm flight instructing, that's what my true passion is, but it was definitely a great time and I learned so much uh, working as an aircraft mechanic. It's funny, um, when I went to AMP school, I was already a private pilot, and for some reason I thought I knew aviation and I knew everything about airplanes and I quickly realized I didn't know anything because once you start getting into maintenance that's when you really learn how many things are involved to make flight happen. So there's a couple things I definitely wish I knew before I started, started my training and I thought it was a a great idea to share those with you so that way you are more prepared to start training. So without further ado, here are some tips, here are some recommendations before you start your aircraft mechanic training. Tip number one, take your orals and practicals along the way. Here's what I mean. A lot of, actually some part 147 schools offer the ability to take your orals and practicals at the end of each block. This is a huge advantage, okay? I know some AMT schools that offer this. For example, the National Aviation Academy is one of them. What they allow you to do is take general plus airframe or power plant, and once you got one of those, you can actually take your orals and practicals. Now, this is a privilege. The only way you're gonna be able to do something like that is if you maintain a high GPA, okay, and your attendance is immaculate. So you're going to class every day, you're not missing any time. I highly recommend you take advantage of this. Also, just try to find a school that offers this because it is a lot to study. If you wait until you're done with the whole course, to take your orals and practicals, it is a lot to learn because you gotta study for general airframe and power plant, okay? That is a lot. A lot of people don't even finish, don't even get their AMPs because they realize at the end of everything how much they have to study. Please listen to me and find AMT school that offers this, you will thank me later. Tip number two, take advantage of the tool discount. A lot of AMT schools are partner up with companies like Snap-on, Mac, Maco, and they offer up to 50% off from their tools. You're gonna be working on airplanes. You're not gonna be working in your lawnmower, okay? So Stanley ain't gonna make the cut. You need to buy high quality tools. Now, that being said, I, I'm not, I don't say everything needs to be Snap-on or Mac or Maco, okay? For example, Snap-on Snap has great, you know, wrenches, sockets, ratchets, um, and that's pretty much it. The rest of Snap-on, I mean, you can buy it from a different brand and not overspend. If you currently can't afford to buy them even with the 50% off, that's fine. I totally understand. I was in the same situation. Tools, unfortunately, good quality tools are very expensive. If you can take advantage of the discount, unfortunately, I couldn't, make sure you buy them used. Don't buy them new. Don't go into the Snap-on track and you know get um, truck credit or whatever it's called and blow your money in the truck. It's not worth it. Buy them used. Here's why. Whenever you buy new tools like uh, from Snap-on, Mac, or Maco, they depreciate about 40 to 50% of their value. When you buy them used, you're already buying them half their new price. Okay, so what that means is when you go resell them, you would be able to get 90 to 100% of your money back. If you buy them new, unfortunately, you're only gonna get 40 to 50% of the money you invested in your tools. Tip number three, get an internship or an apprenticeship in a major airline. Unfortunately, in general aviation, there's no money. Now, if that's what you like, then go for it. But if you wanna start making the good money, you wanna go into the majors. Unfortunately, a lot of these 
uh, major airlines like you know Delta United American they usually require you to have some sort of experience this is why I'm recommending an apprenticeship because this is a great way to put your foot in the door a lot of people may say well I went on the internet and I try to find an apprenticeship and I can't find it you're not looking hard enough I, look right now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna try to find you one Here is what I found. You have an internship with Delta Airlines and here are the requirements for that. If you're looking at this video right now and you're already going through training, make sure you apply, okay? You're, you're not gonna lose anything from, from applying. So go ahead and do that and trust me, that's the way you want to go. Only if GA is what you like, then go ahead and start in general aviation. Tip number four, if you wanna make $10,000 extra a year, become an aircraft broker. If you're good with people and you wanna learn more about sales, with your current knowledge about airplanes and aviation, you would make an excellent aircraft broker. You might say, well, I don't know anything about sales. Guess what? All the information you need to know about sales is here in YouTube. As an aircraft mechanic, you know how to navigate through the logbooks. And guess what? 99% of the questions a prospect is gonna ask you about your client's airplane is in relation to maintenance. And you're, you're gonna be able to answer those questions without any hesitation, at least I hope. That's why I recommend you have at least two to three years in the field. That way you can learn more about ins and outs of different types of airplanes. Since you're gonna be working at the airport, you're gonna meet so many different aircraft owners that you are actually gonna be able to pitch your uh, services or sell your services as an aircraft broker broker and be able to represent them. You can make anywhere from 1% to 9% of the gross sell price of the aircraft. If you can sell two airplanes a year, you could potentially make about $10,000. You are an AMP, so you can actually offer pre-purchase inspections and make even more money. If you guys wanna know more about how to become an aircraft broker, please comment below and I will make a video explaining step-by-step step how you, become, you can become one. And before I let you go, this goes to all those pilots that are trying to become an aircraft mechanic. I heard this so many times. If you are a pilot and you are an AMP, you are all set. Everyone's gonna want you. That statement is not true at all. If you are a pilot and you're watching this video and you're thinking about becoming an aircraft mechanic, my recommendation is that you don't. Focus solely on flying. Airlines don't care if you have an AMP. They really don't. They only care about your flying experience. Now, if the airlines is not your goal and you just want to get your AMP to maybe work on your airplane, then go right ahead. This is mainly for the pilots out there that are trying to go into the airlines. Now, that being said, if you're planning on maybe flying for a charter company, a part 135 charter company, sometimes they do like seeing maintenance experience. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it provided you with some valuable information. And if you wanna see more content like this, please subscribe, ring the bell, and like this video. I'll see you in the next one.